Well, in November of 1861, a steamer ship by the name of Keystone State disappeared into oblivion. The 300-foot ship was last seen carrying Civil War supplies and 33 crew members. No one knew what happened until a veteran shipwreck explorer and his team made a fascinating discovery that has now been solved 150 years later. Now, joining us now by phone from Michigan is the man who found the ship, David Trotter of the Undersea Research and Associates Group. Thanks for joining us, David. Uh, thank you. Now let's talk about what is the importance of this particular find? It's 150 years old, as you said. Um, what do you learn from finding a ship like this on the bottom of Lake Huron? Well, certainly uh, we thought we would solve several vexing mysteries about her disappearance, but in some ways her discovery has opened up some other unresolved uh, mysteries that we think will continue on for a while. Uh, certainly she was uh, a uh, what they call a palace steamer of the time period, side wheel, uh, side wheel steamboat that was very ornate, very opulent, and was certainly for those passengers who could afford it a great style for traveling in the Great Lakes. Any indication at this point as to what may have been the cause? Was it sabotage? Was it a, a, an act of God? Well, it certainly is likely uh, an act of God. Uh, the peculiarity about her, her last hours and last day or two was that she had been re-outfitted in Buffalo, brought into Detroit, and uh, as we had understood it at the time, uh, supposed to be loaded and ply the route between uh, Buffalo and Detroit. And instead, on very short notice, she apparently left uh, Milwaukee loaded with what was described as iron implements. Uh, normally that would be considered uh, uh, farming implements, except this is November, and of course uh, there's little farming activity going on through the winter. Uh, so that raised one uh, issue. The second is she actually left without lifeboats. It's almost like she had made up her mind that uh, she had a deadline to meet and she was leaving at all cost. Not on the set. Well, so you've been doing this for a long time. Is there a difference between trying to find something in the middle of a lake as opposed to finding something in the middle of the ocean? Is, is, it, is it darker in a lake? Is it more hazardous because, of, because it is closed on, on all sides? Well, certainly the dangers in the Great Lakes uh, are magnified by, uh, although they're quite deep, and in the sense that they can be several hundred feet deep, but they're relatively shallow, and they create a tremendous amount of turbulence in the storms that uh, cross uh, uh, the Midwest in the fall. So when she left and got up off of Port Austin, it's an area that's uh, off of what we call the thumb of Michigan, it was, uh, she was reported to be disabled and in serious trouble. So uh, at that point, one would reasonably conclude that maybe perhaps where you might find her eventually is in that portion of uh, Lake Huron. But it turns out she ended up uh, 40 to 50 miles further north, which uh, tells us that she had quite a struggle for many hours before she finally uh, disappeared with that crew of 33. Now, just uh, one final question. Now, how many, you've been doing this a long time, as I said, you found so many different shipwrecks. How many boats are unaccounted for in the Great Lakes? Uh, there are still uh, a couple of hundred, uh, given the enormity of the Great Lakes. Lake Huron itself, as an example, its surface area is 25,000 square miles when you include that portion that uh, belongs to Canada. Uh, the U.S. side is uh, 10,000 of that 25, approximately. So it gives you some idea of the significant uh, territory or amount of bottom that you'd cover in order to locate some of these missing ships. David Trotter, shipwreck hunter. I love saying that. Thank you so much for joining us.